Hello and welcome to the Henley and Partners Global Mobility Report webcast series. I'm Juliet Foster and I'm delighted to be your host and moderator for this prestigious series of exclusive interviews with leading international academics and professional experts on the major and emerging trends in global and regional mobility. Grounded in geopolitical analysis and with a focus on the reality shaping our world from COVID-19 to climate change to economic downturn and ongoing conflict, the Global Mobility Report series offers exclusive insight into mobility and migration patterns and looks at what we can expect in the months to come. Well, joining me today to discuss the latest migration and mobility trends in the Caribbean region is Dr. Suzette Houghton. She is a senior lecturer and head of the Department of Government at the University of the West Indies. Suzette, welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Put this into context for us, because look, how important is tourism and investment migration to the Caribbean? Tourism is very, very vital to the Caribbean region. Uh, the Caribbean countries are island states and they are all tourism dependent um, countries. When you think of their the, the contribution to GDP, uh, the tourism has contributed 59 million US dollars to the GDP of the region in 2019. And also, not only tourism, but also uh, citizenship by investment programs are also very, very important to the 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 um, economic life and the, the 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 economic development of the Caribbean region. So, given that reality, what is it that the Caribbean authorities are doing to kickstart the tourism centre and, at the same time, expand their citizenship by investment programs? The Caribbean countries have embarked on a number of initiatives to kickstart the tourism sector and the citizenship by investment um, programs. In Jamaica, for instance, the Jamaican authorities have um, reopened the, the sector starting uh, June 2020. And the, the, the authorities have also instituted the Resilient Corridors Program and the Jamaica Cares Program. In Barbados, for instance, you had the, um, the, 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 the authorities in instituting the welcome um, stamp for um, visitors to be able to work in Barbados for one year while enjoying the beautiful island. So, so those are some of the initiatives, for instance, that um, Caribbean countries have embarked on. And I, I think I need to mention as well the um, St. Lucia, because St. Lucia has instituted a very innovative um, program, the COVID-19 relief bond um, program to, to attract visitors and investors into St. Lucia to, to, to stay for a prolonged period of time to work while um, staying in, in, in uh, St. Lucia. Sure. So they've really hit the ground running on this. And I want to focus on Antigua and Barbuda because you, you mentioned that keyword innovation. Now, they recently introduced the Nomad Digital Residence Program. So how does that work? So, so that program is a very innovative um, program, as, as the name suggests, Nomad Digital um, Residency Program. What it does is, is that it, it allows uh, non-Antiguans to be able to, to stay in Antigua. They are issued um, long-stay visas and they can work from Antigua while enjoying the, the beautiful island. And what is required is that uh, persons or applicants should be employed or self-employed in their native country and they have to pay taxes in their native country. They cannot uh, or 
um, apply for employment in any one of the, the businesses that are registered in Antigua and they should be able to deploy their, their work from Antigua remotely using the um, remote technology. Now, I know that you mentioned Jamaica in one of your previous responses, and I want to focus on the authority's resilient corridors and Jamaica CARES initiatives. Now, these were launched in November 2020. How are they going to work? Well, that's the the initiatives involve the the Jamaican authorities. It, It was an initiative for the Jamaican authorities to reopen or restart the tourism um, sector. So the resilient corridors, for instance, involved the Jamaican authorities dividing the country uh, into zones. So there were two zones. You had the Northern zone and the Southern zone. The Northern zone involved um, the country from Negril, which is in the northwestern region of the country, to Port Antonio, which is in the northeastern um, region of the country. And that was considered as a zone for reopening. And all the necessary protocols were in place, uh, all-inclusive hotels. And the government reopened that corridor um, in June 2020. And later on, the the Southern Corridor was reopened. So some very sound strategic planning that's going on. And let's take this a little bit further, because we're now in 2021. Do you see the Caribbean generally introducing e-visas? And how much of a game changer is that going to be for the region, given what it is trying to do, not just roll out its attractiveness to tourism, but above all, to actually say to people, look, this is a really good place to come and work. Yes. Uh, the, the, I think this, this notion of e-visas, that will be a game changer for the Caribbean region. It will be an innovative um, measure that Caribbean authorities can embark on. Uh, one of the things I think that this will facilitate is it will improve or reduce the times required for processing, for management and processing of of visa applications. And it might even encourage others who would not have wanted to visit the region because of possibly the bureaucratic hurdles involved in, uh, in, uh, in, in getting visas to visit. These persons might now be willing to visit the region and uh, uh, tied to, to this entire uh, notion of, of e-visas would be possibly something that Caribbean authorities could, could consider is immunity passports. So we have your e-visas, you have your immunity passports where uh, the COVID-19 status of individuals could be checked and they could be approved for international um, travel, for safe international travel. Just a, a final, final thought. Do you think that many of these initiatives have been accelerated by COVID-19? I'm sure that they were talked about before, but given the opportunities that COVID has afforded, this has really encouraged authorities to speed up how they're approaching the subject. Absolutely, because COVID-19, I think, has, has, has created a ga- will create a game changer for the region. The region understands the importance of tourism and the importance of global mobility. And this has been stemmed by COVID-19 um, pandemic. So restarting the, the um, tourism sector and restarting and facilitating and ensuring that global movement um, happens in the region is the best way to boost the economies of the Caribbean region. 
OK, we'll have to leave it there. But thank you so much, Suzette, for sharing your, your valuable insights and indeed the, the latest on the migration and mobility trends that are taking place in the Caribbean region. And also a big thank you to our global online audience for your engagement and indeed participation in the Henley and Partners Global Mobility Report series.